Hello everybody. Welcome back to the shop. For ten more minutes. Time to chief build in action. Had to do that one more time. Talk on it, I'm gonna miss the Thunder Chief videos. <laughs> but okay, we got us a CG. Alright, that's a third of the wing that tapes on that side of it. It's right there. And uh, we was picking it up this morning, me and my buddy John. And it took both the batteries off my cordless drill. It took both of these, both of them. <laughs> but remember, a long time ago, I asked you guys, told you guys how much lead this was going to take. Remember, way back. Oh, it's been a while ago. <laughs> I told you guys it was going to take four pounds of lead. Guess what it needs? <laughs> four pounds on the money, man. The batteries actually come out a little bit more, but I can get a lead chunk up there higher. So I need me a hunk of lead, man. So what does the guy do when he needs a hunk of lead? He calls his cousin. My cousin races race cars. <laughs> they use uh, valve covers for molds. See, that's a valve cover. <laughs> but I need to break it down. So I got out the old fish and sinker maker. And speaking of fishing sinkers, I was going to go ahead and whoop up some sinkers. I'm out. But I can't find my sinker mold. I think Dad came and got it last summer. I think it's over at Dad's place. But I don't need that's about a nine pound hunk of lead. I need about half of that, not quite half of it. So what I got, yeah, I got these from the grocery store. Actually, they're kinda of old, I got it. So we'll get a we'll get a nice fresh one up here. I got them. They're just uh, little pastry tins. Okay. Now, when we pour four pounds of lead in there, it's liable to swell that out a little bit. So I got an idea for that. It's gonna take a while for that lead to melt down. It'll take about an hour probably for that big old hunk of lead to melt down. Maybe not that long. Yeah, they got they strap big old hunks of lead to them race cars, man. You know, they put the weight where they need it. But that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take. Of course, we won't be able to do it on this butch's nice tablecloth. <laughs> but uh. I'll set them to, in, to where I can set them in it. And I'll leave all them tins together. That'll kind of disperse the heat. So it won't catch nothing on fire. And I'll just fill the nice little mold up. I could even, uh, well, I won't need to, but if I did, I could put a piece of brass tubing down in there. You know, and uh, fill the lead up. I put bolts. You can set a bolt down in there, and, and you know, and pour your lead in there till your bolt sticks out. But, uh, I used to do that on the warbirds. If you need to, you know, make your ingot, just go ahead and just bolt it. Stick a bolt in there. Just can't really drill through this lead. But I had a couple other questions. Uh, one guy was asking me about servos. And man, I tell you, what I don't like about the high-tech servos, yeah, I know they got big pounds of torque and they're fine for uh, 3D planes and stuff like that, but when you're going, you know, over 150 miles an hour, 180, 200, you need really fast servos. And if you notice these 87 11s, they move faster than you could actually physically move that stick, man, where high-techs don't. See, and I think that's where they get that big power out of high-tech servos is they gear their servos down so much well it gives them big power but it also slows the speed down but if you're flying 3d airplanes or planes around 100 miles an hour it don't matter see because when me and John we both had a top flight big p51s you know the giant scale 
I had a ZD, ZD, ZDZ80 in mine and all JR 8611s on everything. Okay, that plane was radar, flat and level at 160 mile an hour. John had the same plane with a 3W75. Okay, it wasn't quite as fast, but it, it flew about 140. And uh, he had all high techs in his. And the difference, you know, and I flew both airplanes. You know, you're out there standing next to John, he'll just hand his transmitter here, fly this. You know? <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, mine handled so nice, real crisp, real responsive. John's just, just kind of lumbered around. It's kind of, remember? That, that old van your Uncle Jack used to have, it drove down the road straight like this. <laughs> that's what, not to bash anything, but that's just kind of what high-tech servos remind me of, you know. I like the, the real crisp, fast JR servos. They're fast, man. They're powerful. And uh, that's just my opinion, though, you know. You can take it or leave it. A lot of guys use them high techs and they like it, you know, so, you know, it's whatever you like. And But that's the reason I don't. You know, I know they're cool, you can reverse them and stuff like that, but, you know, if you're playing your model right, you know, I could have put a power box in that and opened up some ports and stuff like that, but I like to keep it a little simple and, you know, a little old school, keep it as simple as we can, you know. You can stack so much stuff in there, high dollar stuff, that it ain't even funny. It's just more to go wrong. I don't know. Each their own with that, too. And, uh, what other questions? Oh, I got Zombie Dude in there. Got him test fit. Someone said he's probably chomping at the bit. I'm sure he was. <laughs> and with the period correct helmet. One of our fans sent us. And also, oh, he was talking about them, uh, my aileron and flap servos, uh, horns are just, they're like this rudder servo. You know, they don't line up with the slip string. Okay, so let me tell you something about that. That's all fine and it looks pretty, but you also gain slop with that method, you know, because if you ain't square off this back edge, that's the best you're going to get right there. Go square off that back edge, it's downhill from there. When you get the angle in them stuff, when you angle your horn in your surface and then your ball joints out here, when they move, they do this. So they're actually going sideways too. So when this goes up and down, this can go sideways. It just kind of creates slop. And it's just that you give a little place for a flutter to slip in there, man, and it'll do it. And you know, bad flutter no recovery from I've seen it happen and uh, there ain't no recovering from it anything but square off your surfaces is a risk that you got to take you know and on the prototype I want to keep it simple and uh, the least amount of problems you know I had to move them servos anyway that was internal and I just thought you know let's just keep this first one simple get it flying because you know you're always bound to have other issues why compound a bunch of issues and just keep it as simple as we can that was my method my madness behind that okay what else I got an exhaust fan set up to suck them fumes out of here and it's in that lid I still smell it I don't want to get in here and suffocate myself. Before we fly the Thunder Chief. Right next to my I'm going to get this ingot of lead made. We're going to get the CG done. And uh, here's the Bobble Wife. She's going to the store. See ya, Bobble Wife. We'll see you guys back in the shop. Get ready for the test flight. It's coming up soon. I'll make y'all a few videos though. We can't run them up though on the on the contest. There's some people that's in the ballpark, so we need to just kind of settle this and uh, declare a winner. But we'll see you guys back in the shop.